two little brothers harry and james had finished supper and were playing until bedtime somehow harry hit james with a stick and tears and bitter words followed charges and accusations were exchanged as their mother prepared them for bed she said now boys what would happen if either of you died tonight and you never had the opportunity again to forgive one another james said well okay i will forgive him tonight but if we are both alive in the morning he better look out <laughs> one new year see at london's garrick club british dramatist frederick lonsdale was asked by seymour hicks both were actors you know seymour hicks acted in the scrooge uh, a christmas carol so uh, frederick lonsdale was asked by seymour hicks to reconcile with a fellow member the two had quarreled in the past and never restored their friendship you must hicks said to lonsdale it is very unkind to be unfriendly at such a time go over now and wish him a happy new year so lonsdale crossed the room and spoke to his enemy i wish you a happy new year he said but only one <laughs> my brothers and sisters last sunday the theme of the readings was fraternal correction brotherly and sisterly correction you know uh, jesus told the community the disciples you should correct out of love because you have to wish for the best for the other so your correction should be not out of prejudice or hatred but out of love you know you want the best uh, for your brothers and sisters and today the readings are all about forgiveness look at the first reading from the book of sirach you know only catholic bible bibles have the book of sirach the other denominations they don't sirach means ecclesiasticus it was written in 175 bc by ben sira in it he gives lot of practical guidelines for the people to follow the law of god how to follow god's law he gives lot of practical guidelines and uh, what we read today in the early church people loved this book is very popular book in the early church they always read you know ecclesiasticus means the book of the church ecclesia means church so look at that today what guidelines he gives about forgiveness forgive your neighbors injustices so that when you pray god will forgive you you see what a great advice and the look at the responsorial psalm the lord is kind and merciful all the readings today speak about forgiveness and in today's gospel we don't know what andrew the brother, brother of peter did to peter but peter comes to jesus and says if my brother sins against me how many times must i forgive him seven times because the rabbi taught that the people should forgive three times only not the fourth time but then seven is also a perfect number in the bible peter wanted to be generous and said seven times but jesus said no not seven times but 77 times which means 70 into 7 490 times which means we shouldn't keep count of how many times we forgive someone and then jesus further explains you know what he means by a parable a story it's a beautiful parable you know a king wanted to settle accounts accounting always in the bible means this is the last judgment so a servant owed the king a huge amount 
And then, you know, when he asked him to pay, he fell at his knees and said, please give me time, I will pay you back. But the king was very compassionate, and then he let him go, you know, you need not pay. But then he went and caught hold of another servant who owed him very minimal, very small amount, and then put him in prison for not paying. The king heard about this, called the servant and said, you know, what did you do? I forgave you, and you have no heart to forgive your fellow servant. And then he punished him, you see. And then Jesus concludes, this is how my heavenly father will treat you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So God forgives us all the time, and he wants us also to forgive others. In Matthew 6, 14 and 15 we read, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your heavenly Father will not forgive your sins. Is God putting any condition on forgiveness, you know? If you forgive, I will forgive you. If you don't, I will not. If God doesn't mean that. What God is saying is, you know, uh, if you do not forgive your neighbor, you are closing your heart. So when I forgive you, you will not be able to receive my forgiveness. Because when you have, when you closed your heart, you cannot give, you cannot receive. So that's what God means, you know. If you are not forgiving your neighbor, you are closing your heart, and you know you cannot receive my forgiveness too. So now, why we need to forgive? Like I said, God forgives us all the time. Just before Mass, you know, I call you all, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves because you don't have time to go to confession and you don't have mortal sin to go to confession. So, you know, the church gives us time before Mass to prepare so that we can receive Jesus in the Eucharist. And then whenever we say, we pray the Lord's Prayer, we also say, you know, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. If you remember, or you might have read, you know, in, on May 13, 1981, Pope John Paul II was shot in St. Peter's Square on the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. By God's grace, he survived. Two years after that, in 1984, January, he visited the pr prison where his assassin was, and then he forgave him. And you know, January uh, 9th, 1984, the Time magazine cover was Pope John Paul II with his assassin in the prison. Both were talking. And when the media asked Pope John Paul II, what did you speak? He said, I just forgave my brother, you know? So God forgives, and we have to forgive. Second one, remember, please forgive yourself. We seldom forgive ourselves, you know? We put a lot of blame on us. So when God forgives us, he wants us also to forgive ourselves. So if you have never forgiven yourself, today is the best opportunity. Please forgive yourself, you know? Please forgive. God wants you to do that. A famous psychologist, you know, from Kansas University, he said, if people know they are forgiven, our clinics would be empty. We have to close them and go for fishing. If people know that they are forgiven, psychologists, you know, they have no jobs. Also, you know, uh, if, if we know we are forgiven, all our ulcers will be extinct. Headaches will be in decline, and a bare aspirin will go out of business. Husbands and wives will become lovers again, and parents and children will live in peace. You know, many dads, if they forgive their sons, you know, there will be a lot of peace. Some children are still waiting for their dads, you know, uh, to say that, you know, I, I forgive you. So parents and children, if they are forgiven, you know, they will live at peace. 
And they also say, I think you will like this, men don't forgive, but they forget. Men don't forgive, but they forget. Women, they forgive, but they don't forget. <laughs> So, brothers and sisters, forgiveness is central to our Christianity. God forgives us all the time, and we also need to forgive. Even in our personal prayer, when we pray to God, our prayer has four purposes, you know? Mostly our prayers are like shopping list, you know? We know what my son needs, my daughter needs, my family needs. We start with the shopping list. No, prayer has four purposes. The first is adoration. We have to praise God, adore God for who he is. Secondly, we need to ask him forgiveness, you know, contrition or confession. We might have said something, did something, not knowing. We have to ask God forgiveness. Thirdly, if God did something for you, thank him. And finally is the supplication, our shopping list. Whatever we need, we can ask God. So our prayer, when you pray, personal prayer, when you come to church, first praise God, adore God for who he is. You see? So that's how confession is important even in our personal prayer. And two years back, Bishop Iyeng started Go Make Disciples Initiative because many Catholics don't go to church these days. There is decline all over the United States, you know? For various reasons, they don't, the people are in, go, those who go to church are in decline. So Bishop Hying gave us four holy habits. They are Sunday Mass, you know. Please go to Sunday Mass. Secondly, spend 15 minutes in prayer or reading the Bible. Third again, monthly confession. You know, when I was in Mineral Point, St. Mary's and St. Paul, I have three penitents who come to me regularly, monthly, and then they tell me, Father Michael, you know why I am here? Bishop Hying asked us to do monthly confession, which is good, you know. <laughs> so for 350 families, I had three people regularly. Now we have 2,500 families. I think the confessional should be busy, you know, every Saturday. But we, it's good, 8.30 to 9.30 every Saturday I am there. Um, you know, a lot of people make use of the sacrament. And then finally, works of mercy, reaching out to the poor. Also, a couple of, you know, I like to share quotes from the Bible, the Beatitudes. Blessed are the merciful, for you will be shown mercy. If we forgive, God will forgive us. He that cannot forgive others breaks the bridge over which he must pass himself, for every man has a need to be forgiven. So if we cannot forgive, we are breaking the bridge. If you break the bridge, you can't walk. And then, you know, we cannot receive forgiveness. And then, in taking revenge, a man is but even with his enemy, but in passing it over, he is superior for it is a prince's part to pardon. You know, if we don't forgive, we are even with our enemy. There is no difference, you know. Both are same. We cannot complain. But if you forgive, you are superior. You see, St. Augustine beautifully says, you know, forgiveness means giving up our right to retaliate, to take revenge. You know, we are, we have the right to get even when somebody does something wrong. But forgiveness is giving up our right to retaliate and take revenge. Finally, this is the best one from Alexander Pope. To err is human, but to forgive is divine. You know, we all make mistakes. Who doesn't? But when we forgive, forgiveness belongs to God. We are participating in God's action when we forgive. So let us, uh, you know, uh, ask for the grace today. We can't do it on our own. With God's grace, we can let go of the hurts and we can very well forgive those who hurt us. God bless you all. Amen.